Hey, how's it going guys? Ricky Summer here, and today I've come back in time to show you some of the new ships from X4 Cradle of Humanity. Very excited. So this is a preview build of the game. I was granted early access to Cradle of Humanity by our good friends over at Egosoft. So thank you for that, Egosoft. I'm just showing off some of the ships. I want to keep some surprises for you because, they, you know, I came across some ships that I wasn't expecting in the game. And there are some elements of the story that, that really made me pug out of my gourd. So I want to preserve those moments for you when you get your hands on the expansion yourself. But for the moment, I'd like to welcome you to Ricky Summers Discount Ships. Welcome, welcome to Ricky Summers Discount Ships where the price is always right, even when the customer isn't. So I hear you're in the market for a new ship. We've got a, a large, wide, engorged selection of ships. I have no doubt that we'll find something to your liking here in stock. I'd like to start off here with the Rapier, a classic ship with a brand new design. This sort of upright affair. You'll you'll see this in a couple of the the new Terran ships. It's uh it's it's very much to my taste. I enjoy it a great deal. You got to you got to be the envy of all your friends gliding around in this magnificent piece. You've got uh speed holes. Look at that. Okay, let's take a look on board. So it's nice and cozy in here. You've got uh, a a console for for playing X3 Albion Prelude if uh, you so desire. You'll you'll note the sleek lines the the jewel the the it's got another window that's that, another windshield is what it is so you can look up i i love looking up personally so this bad boy's got a cruising speed of 384 meters per second absolute top of its range you're not going to find a faster ship highly recommend it if you just need to get from a to b or impress your friends make them jealous you know listen there's nothing to be ashamed of we've all been there we're all compensating for something it's fine i highly recommend the rapier magnificent mag magnificent sporting vehicle you into racing the rapier do it let's go oh that's not your style you want something a little heavier okay i i think i can accommodate you here let me have a look at my stock ah yes the nimcha i think this is going to be a little more to your liking so it's along the same design language as the rapier that sort of upright affair we've got a little more wingage listen it, it may not be as fast as the rapier but i tell you what it looks it looks faster doesn't it it's 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 a sexy ship make no mistake um so this one you look look we have some trouble getting into it sometimes breathe in breathe in that's fine that's that's what i always say here on the lot when you when you want to get into the nim charge just just <laughs> take well exhale really you should exhale because you don't want to you want to get you want to reduce the amount of air in your lungs anyway that's fine uh so similar similar interior styling to the uh to the rapier as you can see it's, it's certainly it's certainly of the same family. Now, this one's not quite as fast as the Rapier. It's only got a cruising speed of 304 meters per second, but that's no slouch, make no mistake. This thing makes up for it with an additional small shield slot. So if you need a scout with a little more heft to it, the Nimcha is your best bet. Or you want something heavier again? All right, let me think about this. Uh, Kukri, we want the Kukri. Oh, Tony, bring up the Kukri. All right, here we go, the Kukri. This, this is a fighter. We're not talking about scout ships anymore. We've got three cannon mountings and, and, and look at those mountings. Aren't they, aren't they beautiful? Love it. So you'll note the Kukri sporting this uh, lovely retro cabin design here. It's still cozy on the inside, but uh, you got a little more room to, to peep out your peripherals here, which you're gonna need in combat. So this thing's got a cruising speed of 210 meters per second. It's only got one small shield generator, but it makes up for that with three weapon hard points. You know, you're getting two additional cannons over the scout ships here. You know, it's a workhorse. If you if you look, if you need to field a, a little squadron of these to run a combat air patrol, or you know, just just protect a station, whatever whatever you need. You know, the Kukri's the Kukri's going to deliver. You want something heavier again? Oh, uh, look, all right, I'll, I'll see what we got. All right, we're getting into the big guns now. This is the Gladius. This is quite a unique ship. We've got the uh, the, the gull wing, well, wings, that fold up as we land. We've got an additional cannon mounting for four right here. It's it's a sleek individual. Uh, similar cockpit design, but we've got this, um, this big dongle. Uh, what's it for? Some say it's for communications array, others say it's uh, for ramming, but uh, <laughs> I'll let you get creative with it. You'll notice that the shield generators are actually on the inside 
of those wings there. So very protected, uh, a very strategic, intelligent design, if you ask me. Uh, to get into it, you know, we've got the security feature here where you actually have to uh, jump jump over that wing section there. No, I'm just kidding. We go around the back. You'll note, again, uh, a very cozy design, similar design philosophy, cockpit design philosophy uh, to the Kukri. We've got a cruising speed of 180. So that is, you know, a, quite a substantial dip from, from what we've been looking at previously. But make no mistake, this is a heavy fighter. You know, we've got two small shield generators, and in this case, four <laughs> weapon mountings. Incredible. I mean, like if you just need if you just need to cause some severe damagio, <laughs> I mean, this this is the ship for you. You know, the Gladius. She's reliable. She's tough. Highly recommend. Can't go wrong if you need to blow some shit up. Oh, you you're not interested in combat? Oh, you you want an industry ship? <laughs> okay. Wait, why did you tell me before? All right. I think we can accommodate you. Hold on. You, my friend, are looking for the frog. It's sleek. It's, uh, it's got a perverse dignity about it, I'll tell you that much. This is a small freighter. Uh, single engine, business, business up front and in the rear. Like, if you really think about it, you know, it's double business. And, and like, <laughs> what more could you ask for? We've got a, a, a top-mounted cockpit. You know, we slide in here. And, uh, and we've got this nice little walkway. This is, this is, I mean, this is, like, this is cozy as hell, right? We've got a nice uh, a viewing section in the back. I mean, if you wanted to squeeze a bunk here... You probably could, you know, like, uh, if you don't, if you don't really need, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of walkway access here, you could get, you could get away with that. Sure. Why not? Something, something fold out maybe. So, uh, yeah, we will lose some speed here. It's 98 meters per second cruising speed. We've got one small shield slot, but we can carry 1,790 cubic meters of cargo. And that my friend is nothing to sneeze at. Oh, you want a specialized role? You want a minor, a minor I can do. Hold on. This, my friend, is what you want. The Copus. As you can see, very similar design philosophy. It's based on the frog. But we, we lose a little, bit of the, a little bit of that cargo for the sake of a mining laser. So let's head on in here. As you'll see, we've got a very nice cozy intro. You can put you can put down a welcome mat. I mean, that's what I do on mine. Put up a little sign when the uh, when the Copus is rocking. Don't come a knocking. <laughs> Am I right? So uh, you know we've got the exact same cockpit design. Great visibility. We're looking for minerals and all that. We gain a little bit of speed. So 119 meters per second on this bad boy. We've still got one small shield generator, one small hard point for a mining laser, and we've got 2,000. 380 cubic meters of solid storage. That's huge. If you want to start your mining venture, you know, maybe get into the Nvidium game. I hear it's very competitive, but very lucrative. Buddy, I mean, the Copus, this is the ship for you. Oh, you want something bigger? Bigger I can do. Hold on, let me pull it up. All right, if you're serious about mining, my friend, you want the Bolo. We're talking about medium ships now. Uh, this is a miner, mineral miner. It also comes in a gas variant. If you're interested in that sort of thing, a uh, very interesting design. It's got this sort of pincer uh, kind of situation going on. Uh, the beauty of this is when you land, you can like set up a little block party uh, in this in this area here. This is, I mean, this is a really a quite nice uh, a picnic area uh, if you're so inclined. But let's let's have a look at the interior. All right, welcome to the Bolo. Hello. Uh, Hello, pilot and crew included, uh, if you'd believe that. So, you know, we've got quite a bit more room here uh, to, to spread your legs. Yeah, you can put up a couple of bunks. Uh, why not, you know? So as you can see, uh, quite a wide viewing area here. You, you lose a little uh, periphery, but uh, you got a lot of space above you here. Lots of room to scope out those minerals. You're not going to believe this. We've got a cruising speed of 350 meters per second on this large individual. We've got the capacity for 8,800 cubic meters of solid storage. And on top of all that, we've got two turrets, mining lasers currently equipped there. We've got one slot for a mining drill, currently a Mark II equipped. And we've got a slot for medium shields. You, you don't want a miner anymore. Okay, just transport? Oh uh, yeah, I can do that. You know, let's pull up the Baldrick here. Okay, the Baldrick. And look at those engines. I mean, that's a sexy rear right there. Okay, so the Baldrick, it's, uh, you know, it's your bog standard transport. What more can be said? It's, uh, it's pretty stylish. Let's go have a look at this individual on the inside here. I mean, if you're trying to impress, uh, look at that. Is, is that, is that an entrance to a ship or what? 
So compared to the Bolo, it's a little cozier. But look at those modern stylings. I mean, you're not gonna, you're not gonna find a, a cockpit like this uh, in in any any other class of ship. Uh, you can keep an eye on your subordinates right in front of you there. Yeah, not not like a huge amount of visibility, but hello. Hello, hi, yes, again, crew included. Do you really need that much visibility when you're, when you're going from A to B? You know, Eagle Eye and the scanners looking for pirates? You know, it's fine. We've got a cruising speed of 135 meters per second. So, you know, it's uh, it's one-upping the small freighters. Not quite as, as good as the Bolo. Uh, we've got 10,700 cubic meters of cargo space, which is just magnificent. That's, that's gonna serve you really well. We've got space for two medium turrets and it's equipped with one medium shield generator. Okay, you'd like to see a medium escort ship. Okay, yes, we've, we've got a few options here. Let's have a look. This, my friend, is the Qian. This is a gunboat. Uh, it's gonna serve you real well as an escort ship. Turrets, it turrets galore. Let's take a look inside. As you can see, similar design philosophy to the Baldrick. The benefit here being that you can see all four turrets in action. So you've got complete visibility over uh, over your combat situation. We've got a cruising speed of 265 meters per second on this bad boy, which is actually incredible for a ship of this size. Additionally, we've got six turrets, the four already mentioned in the front that you can see from the cockpit, and we've got an additional two in the back for missile defense or just protecting your flank. Additionally, this thing has space for two medium shield generators. Huge, it's a workhorse. If you need turrets, this thing's got turrets. You're looking for something with a little more attack potential. Okay, I've got a couple options, bear with me. I'd like to introduce you to the Falks. This thing has got it all. It's got a couple turrets for defense. It can even mount a fighter, which is just incredible. Let's take a look inside. We're moving up in the world here. Where else can you get cockpit space of this, of this just, just engorged magnitude? It's beautiful out here. Plenty of space for all your crew. You're not, uh, you know, climbing all over each other. Uh, you've got, you got plenty of visibility out the front here on the, on the bridge. Well, we call it a bridge. You know, at, at this size, we start calling it a bridge. This thing's got a cruising speed of 288 meters per second. It can hold 23 Marines. So if you need a boarding ship, look no further than the Falks. Additionally, it's got four front mounted cannons, two turrets for defense, two slots for shield generators. What more could you want? It's a jack of all trades, maybe the master of none, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> it's no slouch. It's no slouch. You can't go wrong with the Falks. Now, before you make a decision, I'd like to show you one more medium ship here. It's a, it's a, an oldie but a goodie, the Katana. Newly revitalized, very familiar shape though. You know, they, why change a classic, right? Let's have a look inside. So you'll notice a really unique bridge set up here. You won't find this sort of thing on any other ship. There's no elevator. We, we walk in and we just, we're right here. We're straight up to the bridge. I feel like if you need, if you need to get somewhere in a hurry, <laughs> this is the one you don't have to wait for, for clunky elevator systems or anything like that. A uh, very similar bridge system to the Falks. We've got a cruising speed of, you're not gonna believe this, 596 meters per second. That's ridiculous. That's, that's absolutely absurd. If you need to get somewhere quick <laughs> and pack a lot of firepower, the, the Katana's for you, straight up. We've got four front-mounted cannons. We've got space for two turrets, two shield generators. I highly recommend the Katana as a personal yacht, a smuggling ship if you need to get, you know, past the borders uh, really quickly, but uh, <laughs> we won't talk too much about that. All right, now that's all well and good, but I hear what you're saying. You might want something a little bigger. You know, you've got big aspirations. I can appreciate that. You want some large ships, huh? You want maybe some mining, some some freighters? Okay, I've got what you need. The Hokkaido Miner, the Terran Large Mining Ship. As you'll note, the Hokkaido has an S-shape bridge design, as you can see right here. Very modern, very stylish. You're gonna be the envy of all your friends but still flying those old split ships. And uh, make no mistake, there's nothing wrong with split ships, but uh, <laughs> look, they're not Terran ships. So from this vantage point, you can keep an eye on your subordinates down below. You can see the magnificent two docking ports out the front there. This is a very social, as I said, modern bridge design. And you're gonna see this sort of design on a lot of the Terran capital ships. This thing's got a cruising speed of 85 meters per second, a solid cargo capacity of 38,000 cubic meters. Absolutely incredible. We've got space for a single large mining turret 
eight medium defensive turrets, one large shield generator, eight medium shield generators supporting the eight defensive turrets. It's got a crew capacity of 34, including the captain. It's got drone capability, those two landing pads, as you can see at the top there, and it can store 40 ships internally. An absolute powerhouse, center of your mining operations. Now bear with me, I've got one last large ship I'd like to show off, the Okinawa Terran Freighter. Now it's got the same very modern S-shape bridge design, very similar to the Hokkaido. It's got a cruising speed of 48 meters per second, you know, not great, but what do you want from a freighter? It's got a single landing pad, total crew capacity of 58, including the captain. Just like the Hokkaido, it's got eight medium defensive turrets, six medium shields to back those turrets up. It's got two large shield generators protecting the whole ship. And finally, a storage capacity of 25,000 cubic meters. Getting goods from A to B, trading, you can't go wrong here, the Okinawa. You'll take the lot? Yeah, really? Oh, Tony, we got a sucker. Congratulations on your new fleet. You won't regret it. Yo, thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments what your favorite ship from this video was and which ship you're most excited to fly in X4 Cradle of Humanity. But for the moment, thank you very much for watching. Be excellent to each other and I'll see you next time. Ricky Summer, out.